the functionalities of the operational data portal as it was developed uh, for, for bio and ATR and for you and ATR's purposes. This, this is the framework, this is the service that is going to be the basis of the GPC operational data portal as well. I have a lot of examples and screenshots from current uh, pages on current situations on the operational data portal, but it does not mean that this is how it's going to be used for the GPC's purpose. Uh, this is entirely up to you. What I'm presenting now is just the possibilities and the current usage. So, the operational data portal uh, is something that is a mature solution since it exists since 2012. And it has been used uh, and is being used in numerous locations and countries all over the world. It is customizable and mostly because this is basically a grassroots project that has started in the field and then was implemented and supported by HQ, uh, which means that it is still very much driven by the requirements from the field. We are engaging with our user community and listening to their feedback and their requests as to how to move forward with this project and what else is missing and what else uh, is there to, to improve from our side. Um, the project is supported uh, by FIX in the ESM and is a very much uh, solution and a service that is much appreciated throughout the field. A few key facts about the current ODP. Uh, we have around 180,000 page views per month throughout the, the portal. We have around 95 countries covered uh, between situation views and the standalone country pages that are present on the portal. We have around 500 uh, published camps and settlements, um, which uh, is tied to around 33,000 documents uploaded uh, globally. The number of population records uh, that is entirely updated and uploaded by our field colleagues uh, are number to 34,000, and this is basically done by 300 registered users. How does it look like? Uh, I would like to cover the structure of the ODP in, in two phases, so we can actually talk about how does it look like in the front and how does it look like in the back. So the structure in the front is basically a central repository which means that we have one uh, entry point where you can navigate to multiple places. The two basics that the operational data portal uh, is founded on are the separate country pages and the situation views. And then obviously one country uh, can be part of, of both and can be part of many situations at the same time. How does it look like? Uh, basically, under countries, you have a separate view for each country that wishes to be displayed on the operational data portal. And the aim of this view is to give a comprehensive picture of uh, the country as an operation. And this includes many different types of content and data. On the other hand, under situations, you can find uh, situation views that are revolving around the specific cause of displacement, such as the Syria situation, the South Sudan situation, or the Burundi portal. So these are, these are the two main building, building blocks of the portal. And then one thing that is also very important for us is to give visibility to partners. So there's a a separate section for partners and who's doing what for information uh, linked to, to each of these views. We have a separate section here for maps, uh, which is basically just an aggregation of all the documents that were uploaded and tagged as maps uh, in the backend. And the other thing that is also very important is the global search, uh, because the aim of the centralized operation is to provide users one 
uh, entry point where they can search and find any type of content that has been uploaded to any of the countries or any of the situations. Grabbing a little bit more into the structure in the front, uh, we have a navigation pane, a navigation panel that is present uh, everywhere on the portal. So you can basically go back to, to these entry points wherever you wish to do so, wherever you wish to do so. Under this, we have a, a sub-navigation where you either have access or see the name of the situation you're currently browsing or the name of the country page if you are browsing a country view. The page itself, and basically every page on the operational data portal, is uh, building up from something that we call widget. A widget is basically one teeny tiny app that is specified to display a certain type of, of content. So on this page, for example, you have many widgets. You have one that is displaying the total population of concern in red. You have one that displays it in blue. You have uh, breakdown tables. You have maps. And you have many other types of, of widgets. The very good thing about the portal is that these widgets are fully customizable in terms of uh, turning them on or off and their uh, location on the page. So this means that. Every user or every admin person on the portal can decide uh, fully on how the page looks like and what kind of information and data the page displays. It's entirely up to the users. The structure in the front, uh, continuing on this, is basically uh, this is how it looks like when you want to specify the layout of the page. So the layout is fully customizable. What you see on this picture, on this screenshot, is widgets are the blue uh, lines. As you see, yeah, we have a header, we have a left column, we have a right column, and we have a footer as well. So this is where the widgets can be placed. And these are the spaces that can be used to build up a page. The structure in the back is basically uh, relying on geographical locations. The lowest level of these locations can go down to camps or uh, villages, and then it can be fully customizable on how you build up to the larger admin levels. So this can mean uh, governorates, this can mean districts, uh, countries, and then finally, situations. The content can be added to any of these levels. This is what these plus signs uh, signify. So you can add a piece of, of news item to Mafrak. You can add a document to Mafrak as a governorate. Or you can add population data to Jordan as a country. What happens then as you go up to this, this tree, this structure, is information and data also gets aggregated upwards. So whatever you add it to the camp or settlement level can be displayed as aggregated uh, content on the governorate or the district level, and all of those can be aggregated up to the country level, which means that at the end, you will get a comprehensive picture of whatever has been uploaded to the lower levels. Content tagging, so to achieve this, it's very important that whatever is uploaded in the back end of the operational data portal is tagged properly, so then the, the engine can display it at its proper place. The tagging is basically done by two separate tags. One of them is by location, which means that you can tag, as I said, uh, by Settlement, you can tag by governor, and by district, by uh, country, any type of, of content up on upload. This will ensure that the content will be displayed at the specific geographic location and will be aggregated upwards. And then you can also tag by population of concern, which is uh, relevant when you want to display content for a specific situation. 
So we call this tagging by population group, which entails tagging by the country, for example, of asylum on the left side, and then a population uh, that is displaced on the right side, which means that in these two examples, we have content tagged uh, in Turkey, Syrian uh, refugees, and we have content which pertains to refugees and migrants from various countries, but the country of asylum is Spain. What kind of information can be collected and uploaded to the operational data portal? So, as I mentioned before, we have uh, called widgets, and we have currently over 30 different types of widgets. But we continuously develop and update this. So in the future, uh, this number is going to grow. What kind of content these widgets um, can do? It can be population data, which is, I think, uh, most important when it comes to the operational data portal, in addition to public information and external sources, uh, and out of which I would say that the documents are the ones that are the most used uh, on the portal. Then we can actually upload and display sectorial data uh, for coordination purposes. And then there are other features um, covering uh, other areas of, of interest for users. So this building block that is called widget uh, is always linked to a specific content type. The content type mostly is uploaded in the backend but it doesn't have to be. We can actually just show external sources uh, through these widgets. The most used ones are the map, of course, documents, links, news highlights, the population data, and then we have working groups, events, and partner information as well. What I'm going to do now is just to go through some of these widgets. I will go through of them because it would take a significant amount of time. So I was trying to focus on the ones that are the most meaningful for the Global Protection Cluster. Uh, but please feel free to, to ask if you're interested in more details about any of, of those. So the first one is the interactive map. Uh, the map is basically uh, a carrier to show population data on the portal. We use these bubbles uh, displayed here in blue and red to show uh, population figures by location specified by the user. So we can show population groups. Here is displayed uh, refugees from Somalia and estimated IDPs in Somalia at the same time on the same map, which is here used the country level, but we can also go down to a deeper level if we have the data available in the portal. Interactive map uh, is mostly displayed on, on each page of the operational data portal and is usually a significant widget, um, which means that it is located uh, either in the header or somewhere on top of the, the page. So, the map displays population data, but that is not the only widget that we have for this specific purpose. Uh, we have population figures, narrative text boxes that usually support this function. We have time graphs, breakdown tables, we have a breakdown by country, we have an age and gender graph, and we have country of origin tables, and also the map, as I mentioned before. How do these look like? Um, total population is displayed with one single figure per population group. In this picture, we see two population groups. One is total population of concern for a specific location. The other one is new arrivals in 2018 for that specific location. What is really important for us and for the users as well is to display not just the total population, but give some metadata about it. So the metadata in this screenshot is the date of the data. It was last updated uh, at the end of August 2018. And the source of this data, which is um, mostly UNHCR or government uh, on the portal. 
Most of the R widgets, at least the ones that are displaying population data, also offer the ability to download or interact with these numbers uh, through JSON or Excel uh, exports and downloads. This is an example of the breakdown by age and gender uh, pyramid, as I mentioned before. It's basically the same type of population figure displayed uh, from a different point of view. Breakdown by country of origin, breakdown by location, and an example of the disclaimer or narrative text box that we also offer. This is mostly used to explain or give a little bit of context on the figures, but it can be just an overview of the location or the country or the situation view uh, where it is being used. This one, for example, is from the Ethiopia country page where they are giving uh, just a general overview about the operation itself. Time graphs is also something very important because the portal uh, in some cases hold uh, a very huge uh, data from the past. This can be used to uh, visualize trends through different kinds of graphs. It can be a line graph, it can be uh, a bar chart. We also have time graph where you are able to uh, display more than one population group at the same time. In this example, you see from the Syria situation, uh, population type and refugee camp population at the same time. Another example of a simple line graph showing data over time. Thirteen groups. This is something that is very much aimed at coordination and can be very useful uh, for this audience as well. Um, this is basically a virtual working space for working groups uh, to work together and share information and coordinate uh, the usage of the operational data portal. Uh, good thing about the working groups is that it offers a separate document repository and a calendar. It can display key contacts and it can display who's doing what where. Working groups all have a separate page where this information is being displayed. And the other thing that is very, very beneficial that we have a separate user role for working groups. So basically, in those cases where the working group is co-chaired or chaired by externals, UNHCR, we can provide the ability for these partners um, from other agencies to contribute directly to the portal. So there's no intervention from UNHCR staff necessary if this is uh, the agreement within the working group. Events is another function that is very uh, used in the portal for coordination purposes. It can cover working group meetings, task force meeting, or just other meetings uh, by field level that is uh, useful uh, to disseminate with details. So it's not just uh, the specific timing of the meeting that can be displayed using this widget, but it can be more information for example, um, location, who's chairing the event, and you can also attach documents to um, these events, with, which uh, can be downloaded by visitors of the portal or the working group page. Partners, uh, for partners, um, where you can display the full list of partners uploaded and present on the portal, and at the same time, you can explore and display uh, the specific partner page and display their contributions to uh, the countries and situation views. Document repository, so the document is one of the most used uh, on the portal. As I mentioned before, we have over 30,000 documents uploaded to the portal. One of the things that ensures that this is as useful as possible, the flexible document types. So when you upload the document, you can tag it with multiple metadata elements, and one of these is uh, document type. 
which is fully customizable. So this means that you can use the ones that are already present on the portal, but it's also possible to create a new document type and tag the document with it uh, if there's a need. One document can be tagged with multiple document types. This is how it is going to be displayed on the front end. So basically, the widget is displaying the documents by category, and you can browse through by clicking on the different categories. There's also a view, uh, which is the global search uh, that I've mentioned before, where you see every document that has been uploaded. Some of the metadata elements uh, is displayed here, that is linked to the documents. So there's a title and a description for each document. Uh, externally uh, located documents can be used on the portal, so it doesn't have to be a direct upload. It can come from Dropbox from, or from a URL that is external. Language is one of the tags or metadata elements that we use to characterize these documents. Uh, there's a list of sectors the document with in addition to the document type I have mentioned before. You can tag the documents by partner, which ensures that partners who contribute to the information and data visible on the portal are getting recognition. Uh, the working groups, as I mentioned before, have their separate repository. So the way uh, documents are displayed on the working group pages is by tagging them with the relevant working group in the back end. Uh, the other thing that is very important is each document has a publish date. It means that these documents will be sorted in the front end by the publish date, so always the ones that are newer will be displayed uh, on the top. Some function that we have developed uh, with the mind of giving direct access to external partners uh, to the portal is the approval mechanism. So a user can have a user profile which gives him, uh, grants him access to the portal uh, and the portal backend, but all the documents uploaded by this user will have to be approved by someone higher in the, the hierarchy before actually being displayed um, to, the, uh, to the front end and to, to other users. So the global search page is uh, displayed in this screenshot. The global search is used for searching globally on the portal for every content type. So you can filter by links, highlights, needs assessments, documents, or you can also search for simple news items using the global search. You can search by location, which can be either country or you can delve deeper into uh, the location tree. Uh, one thing that is very um, appreciated in global search is that the keyword search actually searches inside the document text. So it's not just a title search, but every document is in and their content can be searched using this function. Other widgets that are a little bit more um, external relations or PI related, uh, one of those is links. Uh, with which you can display links to external websites on your uh, on your page. This can be human agencies, this can be referred or any other uh, source or material that you deem important to display for the users of your site. Another PI-related widget is news articles. This is usually coming from other sites or sources, which means that there's an already existing article somewhere on the web, which we are basically linking and drawing attention to using this widget. Highlights, something that is similar, but it is one specific uh, piece of content that is very limited in size. It can only be around 150 characters. Use these kind of short information bursts to highlight uh, important events or important information on the portal, like uh, mass influx, uh, a new activity, uh, availability of, of new data, a new distribution date, for example. 
one of the widgets that can display external content and is basically completely automatically updated is the Twitter widget, which is simply an embed function. So you can use an already existing Twitter account and display the last two, three, five uh, tweets on the page by using the Twitter widget. This is very uh, useful because this is a content that is being automatically updated as someone updates the Twitter account, and it does not require manual intervention from, from the portal admin. It only needs to be added once, and then. A similar concept, but with Facebook account. We observe that more and more UNHCR operations have their own Facebook account. Uh, we are giving an opportunity here to display that female, uh, Facebook account and, and uh, the timeline of the Facebook account here. RSS feed, uh, for those who are familiar with the concept, RSS feed is basically an automatic uh, feed from external source. Uh, one of them is ReliefWeb that basically offers this ability you can just navigate to a page on relief web or search for with specific filters and then generate um, an RSS feed from this information, which means that whenever a new content appears on relief web, this information is going to be displayed automatically on the portal as well, thus creating uh, a comprehensive picture of available data and documentation. This is also automatic, so it doesn't require uh, intervention from the portal admin. And then the last uh, widget that is uh, dealing with external content is very simple embed widget. This was created for the purpose of the ability uh, of displaying external pages or external applications even on the portal. Uh, the most used examples here is the embedding of a YouTube video to the portal page or dashboard that was basically developed in either Tableau or Power BI or some other data visualization technology. This can be plugged into uh, a portal page and displayed as is. One of the other features uh, of the portal is the multiple languages. So the portal is currently available in English, in French, in Arabic, and in Spanish. And this means that we have a set of, of standard expressions that are used throughout the portal. These are translated automatically. And upon switching the language, these will switch to, to the new language. There's also the ability to basically create each version of every title that is inputted by users in each of these languages, which means that whatever widget you're using and whatever title you have inputted for that widget can be displayed in another language as well. So here you see that the, uh, the title of the situation, uh, selector, um, and even the widget title for the total population has been switched to Spanish as well. And this was basically the portal in, in a nutshell. Uh, since we have been working on this uh, for a number of years now, I would say that the portal covers a huge number of, of needs and it has a lot of functionality. So these are the, the most basic and the most important that I wanted to present today. So I can either uh, pass it back to you, Musa, or just uh, have some questions from colleagues at this point, if you want. Thanks a lot, Marianne. Yes, let's, uh, let's have any questions from colleagues. That would be great. Thank you. Uh, 
Thank you, Mariana, and thank you, Musa, uh, for this uh, also for this presentation and to give us time to be part of this uh, presentation. For me, actually, I like the idea where we can have um, IDPs uh, or protection global cluster uh, data portal where the protection cluster can present uh, the information and the data collected by uh, protection cluster uh, partners. For me, I <clears throat> am familiar with the, with the operational data portal for the refugee context. But uh, to have a new data portal for protection uh, uh, cluster, uh, I have uh, several questions about the data flow, because we know that uh, there is uh, OCHA uh, data portal where uh, the cluster, they are uh, posting and uh, submitting their documents input to the, uh, that portal. So what's the linkages it will be between the, the two data portal? This is the first question, to avoid the duplicates in terms of uh, uploading data. So for me, as information management cluster covering uh, uh, protection, sorry, as information management managers to cover uh, the protection cluster uh, and uh, re publish it uh, externally, I prefer to use one data portal to publish the information. Either we use the, this operation data portal, which is the global cluster, and uh, to uh, rather than to use two data portal. Uh, so, what's the linkage it will be between the, the new uh, operational data portal for a global protection cluster and also the humanitarian response info data portal? This is my, my first question. Uh, the second question for me, I like uh, what I like with data portal in general, it's more flexible. You can customize the layouts, maps, use different charts. So, this one it will add uh, more value to. to to the protection cluster in the country level and also for the uh, cluster coordinators. And uh, we need to keep in mind the data source and the refugee data portal, let's call it like that, uh, uh, mainly UNCR and the government. But in, in, in protection cluster, no, we are collecting data from different data sources. So this one, it will raise also uh, the information sharing protocols in the country level and how we are going to publish this data. Uh, yeah, for now, this is my question, and if I have more questions and uh, colleagues in Geneva, I will, I will ask. Thank you. Uh, Marianne, shall I take this, the first question, or? Uh... Sure, please go ahead. Okay, uh, say thanks a lot. Um, now, just to have a background, Saeed, well, how did this project start? Uh, at one point, uh, HR Info um, was not, um, like they were talking about uh, maybe taking it out and, and uh, keeping the relief web as the main uh, source of, of data. Now, as, as you see, one thing is there's a, there is a connection between the data portal and relief web. Relief web will be able to capture all the documents put on our data portal and it will have all the, uh, uh, so automatically that, that connection to the relief web exists. Uh, Marianne, correct me if I'm wrong, because in my days, this was the case. Uh, they used to uh, crawl everything we put mm -hmm. on the data portal to the relief web. Yes, that, that is still the case and it's correct. And the connection is actually there from the other way around uh, through the RSS widget, which can just display whatever is on the So it works uh, in both ways. Perfect. So the idea is to answer the question. At one point during last year, we were we were uh, having a discussion with OCHA about maybe the uh, HR info not, not existing after a certain time and moving to um, Relief Web as a platform. And, and simply this started as, as, um, as a, this is really what initiated the, the project. But OCHA is aware of it and, and actually it, it, it's a different perspective because now if you try to go and find uh, all Protect or, or you know you want to have some protection cluster information about multiple countries. You really struggle. Uh, you have to go from one search to another. There is no one place where you have like a, a, you can go from one country to another. Look at examples and and and, and you know. So I, I think we will really would like to focus on the data portal. We'll definitely keep things available in Relief Web as well. 
and 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 uh, once I, I will have a presentation, I think that presentation will also answer some of uh, your other questions, uh, uh, like the typology on data source. It's a very valid good point, and I actually um, I try to touch on it in my presentation. So. Um, um, that's the answer for the first question, and, and I also would like to highlight that this data portal will be not only for the, you know, it's simply like the way we see protection cluster. Protection cluster is everyone. Protection cluster is us, is the AORs, is the ch child protection, the GBV, the, the mine action, is the house, land, and property, and, and, and we're hoping to serve this everyone if they have interest in, in, in having a platform and, and, and Populate, you know. So now the management on a country level will allow more uh, more support to also our partners and our uh, our partners in coordination. Um, so that's really why why we we came, simply went into this because at least then all of us or some of us will be in one place rather than being all over the place where everyone has uh, you know a piece of the picture but we don't have the full picture. I hope that answers your, your question, your first question. Yes, Musa. Thank you. Thanks for answering. And, and the sec I don't know if I missed something on the second, but uh, I think we touched on both. But the, the presentation will answer your second question. I'll, I'll, I'll hope you, you give me the chance to present and, and see if you still have more, more questions around that. Okay, go ahead. Thanks. Any other questions for Marianne or, or me before I move to the presentation? Uh, yes. Philip was, was raising his hand. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello, everyone. And thank you for the presentation. I was wondering on the data portal, um, is there, are there different access levels? I mean, is it possible to have restricted access to a page or to documents because some um, some documents are uh, rather uh, sensitive or confidential or, but okay so you mean uh, restrictive access or different access yeah. levels for the end users right yes yeah mm -hmm. no uh right now for the operational data portal, we, we don't do that actually because the whole idea of the ODP is that it, it, is, it is for data dissemination and information dissemination. So we only put things on the ODP that can go public immediately. Okay, thank you. But simply just, just to, if I may also add, uh, Maria. So simply, like, there are so many levels of permission on, on the admin side. There's even a clearance process where you can, uh, you can clear documents. But I, I, again, like, uh, it's not a place to put sensitive documents, that's, that's for sure. It's a place mm -hmm. to publish them. Exactly. So we have a functionality that we developed uh, for, for uh, country pages and situation pages that are uh, in the works. So you can hide them with a little bit of, of a secret token added to the URL. But this is a temporary measure and absolutely not 100% uh, uh, safe. So we don't actually uh, recommend using that for in the long term and for that purpose. Okay. Thanks. I would say, Musa, go ahead and, and uh, present your material as well. Looking at the time. Sorry, Philip, you wanted to ask a question or should I go ahead with the, uh, with the presentation? Okay, I, I think uh, it was a very time from before. Uh, time, so I just, my, my presentation should be really short. So, Okay, can you guys see my screen? Yeah. Perfect. Just uh, hiding this, I don't know if you see it. But, uh, so, uh, I'm going to try not to repeat things that uh, were 
where I touched upon before. So simply the, the GPC data portal already exists. If we go to data.globalsectioncluster.org or if you go to gpcdata.org, you'll be, you'll be getting to the data portal. We still have no countries. We're really uh, building on, on your support and, and uh, we'll, we will support you as well and hopefully uh, be able to roll out the, the portal within a year, Matt, I'm hoping. Um, you know, just an introduction, what is the data portal for the GPC? It's simply a place where we disseminate information uh, to support coordination. Uh, and, and, and as you saw, the data portal has a lot of functionalities based around coordination, and this is really the core of our uh, mandate here, and, uh, you know, as, as a global protection cluster, as clusters in the field, as AORs that we're all trying to, to have uh, the best coordination possible and we're hoping the portal will, will support the information for coordination. So the portal will be rolled out in phases. Like phase one, we're really only thinking of uh, focusing on consolidating country pages from other platforms. So we will support with, uh, with moving some of the documents from the GPC site and the HR info. Hopefully we'll have a focal point to work with in the country. And, and, and also consolidating of, of planning figures. We're, we're also hoping to at least start with planning figures. Um, we, we will move on uh, and, and hopefully gradually we'll be moving to a response that we can have some aligned indicators, at least a uh, number of people reached, uh, if, if not more aligned indicator and more, you know, maybe even uh, indicators around the AORs and uh, around us and where we, we can show some of our work uh, using these graphs and widgets that you saw. Uh, I, I'm just going to go through the key features um, for the data portal. For us, um, why the data portal? Because it's a sustainable solution uh, as it's the UNHCR corporate uh, tool. Now, uh, we, we might work a little bit more on the branding if, if we have any issues that uh, are shared by partners. But the idea is like instead of building our own solution and support it and, 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 and UNCR was kind enough to support us with their doctor portal, which is built around coordination and should serve the, our purpose. And, and hopefully it will be sustainable because you will always have people uh, to support it after uh, we're done because, you know, in our type of business in a few years, no one knows where, where we will be. At least we're hoping the data portal will be there. And, and, the, and, and all the information will continue to exist and, and inform uh, others. Now, uh, user management is a key factor because in the data portal, you can have permissions up to on, on country pages. And, and, and this way, we can also include our AORs and our partners uh, to, to be part of this. The whole point is we, we want to build a collaborative platform for all of us. Uh, and at least a platform that enables us to do it. Now, hopefully, we'll, 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 we'll get the support and will from everyone to be able to, to, to reach that dream where we all can work together and uh, have our data in, in one place. At least the system can enable us. The ability to search within the documents, I think uh, Marianne touched on that, and not many platforms provide you with that. I think this is a key feature. Uh, as a document library, yeah, usually we only search in titles, we search in metadata, but to be able to search within documents, I think this is a great, a great tool, like really, I think it's a very important uh, feature that will allow uh, better uh, discoverable documents on, on our data portal and will allow people to dig deep and find exactly what they're looking for. So we're really very, very keen on this. <coughs> I think it will be very useful for all of us. Now, the ability to control where the documents appear within the portal. So simply the tagging, like sometimes you just want to have your documents on the country pages, but sometimes you want to, we want to show your work as well. So we'll be able as a protection cluster to tag them to, to the protection cluster situation. And this way, simply we'll, we'll be able to, to pick and choose and have thematic uh, documents uh, picked from all around and tagged. And this, simply allows us to, to, to have more control over the dissemination and more freedom for the country. They can just publish what they want. There's no revision process, at least not from us. You know, It's all done on the country level. But this will also allow us to go through and maybe pick the, the, the best examples that we think can benefit others and can be published on our 
type. So simply everyone has the freedom. That's the point. Uh, now the pre-existing templates that you saw. Simply th these are what I call support IM for coordination because you know the, the biggest ones. I mean the maps. We all see how valuable maps can can be to to disseminate information. Working groups, and this is exactly what we do. We're all about working together. We have a lot of working groups, sub-working groups, and, and there's no place for now to structure this data, and at least this way, we can also understand uh, the coordination structures and, and who's there, and, and we can work together better. Um, the meetings or the events, uh, simply, you know, we have lots of meetings and minutes, and, and, and now we don't have a place to, to, to you know, like a clear unified place. And hoping this will be a place where, where we can reference to all discussions, all meetings, have more uh, sustainable um, decisions that can carry from one person to another between moving uh, between jobs, you know. Who's doing what where, which is something we all do. At, on the data portal, this will be discoverable, you can search it, it will give also visibility to all of us, uh, the coordination, the partners, and, and, and the member of the cluster, so that's really a, a good way. Uh, funding graphs, which would be a, simply a very key graph that we will yeah, ask all the same question tomorrow. Uh, can you mute yourself? I'm sorry, Philip, can you mute yourself please? Thank you. Uh, another thing is population graphs, where we've seen uh, an assessment registry. And for me, this is another key point. We, have, we do a lot of assessments. And, and, and simply to find an assessment, you just search from one place to another. It would be great if we have one place. where, And it could be the protection cluster providing that service to maybe not only the protection cluster, to the whole coordination, where we have a list of all assessments. We and, and we simply have an assessment registry, uh, which will, will allow to, to reuse uh, yeah, data that was collected before, or maybe at least reuse findings and build on them. And you saw there's many other uh, features. OK, now for us, we're going to keep it simple to start with. This is, this is really what I suggest, or what we suggest as initial common elements. Uh, I think this is a goal that we can reach easily. Um, the, the main elements, we will have a map. On the map, we're hope, hoping to have the internally displaced people figures. I have sourced twice, I know that, because this is really one thing that we need to, to work on. Uh, and this is something that uh, actually uh, Said asked about. So the typology to be created with the support from the field, because yes, you're right, Said, we don't have all the typologies now, but with your support, we will try to build this typology list. We will use uh, whatever comes first, and then if another similar typology comes, we can definitely align and work together and, on harmonizing some of these typologies, and, and that will be definitely a key for, for, for the internal displaced people figure because uh, it comes from many places, as, as you all know. Now, for the graphs and icons, the common, that simply this is not what you must or, or you need to, this is the minimum, and you can have as much as you want. We're hoping to have graphs or icons on people in need, the people targeted, the overall HRP figure. This is a, a, a figure that each one of us has. If you have an HNO and an HRP, you will have these two figures. Uh, for the protection cluster as well, we're going to go for people in need and people targeted. These would be population groups like you saw on the back end. They will aggregate. And they will, they will, they will, we will have a, a global figure on how many people are needed and people targeted by the protection cluster. We're also hoping to have a funding request figure, funding received graph, and to be able to aggregate that to a, a global level. And finally, a document library. For the document library, we, we're going to look at the typology that we have currently on the site, on the GPC site. This typology really came from the field. It was uh, provided by you. Uh, and we just simply worked with you to create these typologies. We're going to try to consolidate and share back to the field and, and see if we have any redundancy, which one would you guys prefer. And it, this might be just a consultative process. We're hoping it doesn't take long. We will uh, try to coordinate that process and, and come up with a clear typology and so that we can move forward with, with this. And um, as you saw, like the asking initially is not much. It's really this. 
so a lot of us do have the internal displaced people figures. It could be an estimation, it could be DTM, it could be IMWG, OCHA, government. We will, we will work whatever figures you think are official in your countries. The sources, again, will talk about them. And the rest, I think we all have it. At least we have the funding request figure. I know sometimes we struggle with the funding received, but I think this this done, at least if, if it can be updated quarterly, that would be that would be really good to start with. And that's it. That's really my presentation. Uh, Musa, thanks a lot. Thanks for the presentation. And uh, from the from South Sudan Global uh, Protection Cluster, uh, really we are interested to have. Uh, the country page to publish uh, the figures and also the achieved uh, uh, activities, uh, partners activities in the to the data portal. For me, I'm now uh, outside uh, South Sudan for r and So when I return back to South Sudan, I will discuss it with the protection cluster coordinator and the AOR IMOs, and we'll come up with uh, with a. Uh, SOPs uh, or annex to how we are going to use the uh, data portal and to start uh, uh, using it. Uh, and also, I, I will present it in the protection cluster uh, working group meeting. But you know, this uh, this time everybody are busy with HRP and uh, also with uh, there will be a lot of meeting and uh, project proposal. So let's uh, hope that. Uh, Next, by uh, mid of November, to, I will uh, start uh, uh, using the data portal for sure. I will come back to you if I have any question related to the graph, chart, and also the uh, indicators, how we are updated based on the HRP, and also some figures we will get it from uh, the FDS uh, in terms of uh, fund. Thank you, and I appreciate the idea. It's uh, perfect. I will come back to you uh, when I return back to, to South Sudan. Uh, Said, uh, allow me to thank you. I, I, I'm really happy to, to, to hear. I'm happy to thank you, Said. I'm happy to, to have a, at least a pilot country. I think together we'll be working to, on putting the base, uh, on, on putting uh, also the branding, the colors, and uh, thanks a lot, Said. That's really promising. Thank you, sir. Uh, Chris. Uh, Hi, everybody. My name is Christelle. I am the Global Coordinator for the Mine Action Area of Responsibility. And uh, first, I really want to congratulate uh, people who have been uh, working on this initiative. I think it, it's, uh, it's very needed. Data sharing is, is critical for uh, sharing analysis and, and get a better, better protection strategy. So we really welcome this effort. Um, I wanted to let you know about an initiative that we are doing because we've been uh, noticing that the mine action is not always completely understood and connected to the protection you know, actors. Although we are part of the GPC, sometimes in the field uh, we're not fully integrated um, and, and we don't share data very often for a number of reasons, sometimes security reasons, confidentiality. So we really want to work on this in 2019. It's part of our work plan to promote uh, and enable sharing of data on mine action, including victim assistance and other protection issues with the GPC partners so we can all improve analysis and protection strategies. So we're going to have a a workshop in, in Amman in, uh, in March uh, uh, on these issues. We're preparing a list of people and some of the key questions that we're hoping to ask is, you know, what is currently happening in terms of data exchange between the mine action and the other organizations? Um, what are the key data and trends that the mine action has and that others have, uh, and that others need rather to plan and deliver better? And also, what is the key data that others have and that mine action needs to plan and deliver better? Um, and also, we want to look at what are the current platforms to exchange this data and what are their limitations and, and what, how can we troubleshoot some of those limitations. So we have a big information management system called INSMA on mine action, uh, which has quite a bit of data in some countries. Um, but it's owned by the national authorities and it's often confidential, so sometimes we cannot share it. 
so we've got a lot a lot of issues and uh, we hope that we can uh, and, and this is my question how can the data portal that you are uh, you know constructing uh, help us in fostering this exchange of data between mine action organization and other human and the other humanitarian partners do you think that this could be uh, there, there could be some uh, some uh, uh, collaboration between us thank you I just have to unmute. Thanks, Crystal. For sure, Crystal. This is exactly the objective. It's, it's for this is this data portal is for all of us. Um, uh, I think we we even can say we have exactly the same ownership, uh, and um, we're hoping that we all utilize it in in the best way possible. Um, we will be more than happy to also support uh, any direction or work that that you're you're thinking of and. You know, and put it in our like you'll have your own pages. We can we can also discuss how we, you would like to to disseminate and present and definitely yes. I hope I answered. I will I will send you the concept note of of the of this project and uh, maybe you can you know participate as well. That, that, that would be really interesting. Thanks a lot, Krista. Uh, I see another hand. Uh, Philip? Uh, yeah, just um, the, a question. What, what, what is the link with the, the data portal? If, if there is any link, or you're, you're using the same uh, uh, let's say the structure or, yeah. The UNICEF yeah. support. There is no link. Simply, we're using the same platform, yeah. the same software. Let's say, if I may call it a software, it's a framework actually. And okay. but but we will customize it. We will uh, make it more uh, for us with the support of UNICEF. But there is no physical link uh, or even digital link. No. Okay. Uh, and thanks for the presentation. And uh, we will certainly use it uh, here in Libya. Thank you, sir. That's really promising. We'll, we'll, we'll be happy to support. Thanks. Uh, Marie, uh, any any questions, thoughts? You've been with us. No, thanks, for uh, It's been very, uh, very useful. I've, I was just listening in um, as a curiosity, but I think it's going to be a useful tool. Thanks. Thank you, Marie. Thank you, guys. All right, so if we have no more questions, uh, we can conclude. Uh, Christelle, do you have a question? I see your hands up. I think that was from before. Yes, it was from before. <laughs> okay, perfect. Guys, I really can't thank you enough to take the time. We know how busy you are. We are, we are really sorry to take your time, but we hope this will be beneficial for all of us. Thanks again. Have yourself a great evening or morning, wherever you are. Have a nice day. Ciao. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Bye. You, Marianne. Thanks. Thanks a lot for your support, Marianne. Thank You're you. more than welcome. Bye. Thanks, Moses. Thank Bye. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye. Thanks.